Hello everybody, I'm here with Abhinash and he just did a great speech about analytics, about facts and figures behind the website and I would love to know more about sure. what you do. Um, so professional, my, my, I'm, I'm, I write a blog called Occam's Razor and I also am the analytics evangelist for Google. So, um, and I've written a book called okay. Web Analytics in Our Day. And it's, it's, it's all about how do you use many different ways of measuring your website and your website yeah. experience. So if somebody comes to you and say, I have 10 million unique visitors, yes. is it a good number or? <laughs> no, I, I think that it is a number, but as I mentioned in the talk today that uh, what I'm more curious about um, as a business person is measuring outcomes. I, I don't care that you had 10 million visitors. Um, so what? Yeah. What was the outcome of it? And that's why, as I gave the example of the Daily Beast, which is Tina Brown's new new web company, and I said, what I really want to measure there is uh, visitor loyalty, the number of people who come to your website repeatedly. Now that is a great number, much better than unique visitors, because it shows that you're building an audience. Yes. Or another great uh, metric I use, let's say I want to measure the success of Facebook. I will measure a metric called recency, which is the gap between each visit. You know, you came today. Now, when was the next time you came? When was the next time? And is, is the gap shorter? Now, if the gap is shorter between visits, it means you have a very engaging website where people are coming, super poking, friend, <laughs> uh, sending applications, things like that. It shows a level of engagement. But both loyalty and recency show outcomes. And, and I'm a very big fan of measuring outcomes. Now, it's, it's obvious that if you have e-commerce, you measure revenue. That's obvious, but yeah. there are a number of things you can do to measure outcomes regardless of what your website is. So start with uniques, it's okay, you can do page views, but grow up very quickly. Yeah. Don't, you don't stay a three-year-old. So and how do you do it? Do you go in a lab and do everything or are you more going out and do trial and error? Or what do you think about that? I know uh, both. Both, I think. I'm a big fan of experimentation and testing and I'm a big fan of just um, actively using the data. Um, and, and um, using it to inform your real business decisions. So, so that, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, not just uh, passively absorbing data, but, but actually um, being very proactive in analyzing data or using things like experimentation and testing to say, I have a hypothesis. I think this page will work better than this page. Or I think that your picture will sell more things than my picture. Or I think this product may sell more if we have it for $20 versus if we sell it for $12. Now these are all what I call hypotheses. And, and the amazing thing about the web is you can create these experiments on your website which then allow you to collect data from your customers and let them tell you exactly what works and what doesn't. So I'm a big fan of doing that. Okay, and then you mentioned that sometimes it depends on the hippos. Yes! <laughs> Who are the hippos? Yes, yes, so, so and my former company, we, we, we used to try and create great websites, listen to feedback, but I always found that the hippo would overrule our ideas. And, and the hippo is an acronym we created for the highest paid person's opinion. And, and it, was, it, was, um, it was because you, you would have this meeting and you had 20 people around it, but, but the person who is the hippo with the highest salary would say, no, I want monkeys on the homepage and you have to put monkeys on the homepage. Um, so that's the acronym. And, and, and the, the thing, I, I think a lot of websites are not very good because I like to say that hippos create them. It's, it's, it sort of kills some of the creativity and ideas. What I'm a bigger fan of is saying, well, a hippo's idea is just as good, or, or maybe as good as Monty's idea, right? Why don't we take Monty's idea, take the hippo's idea, try both? and see which one works, right? And it's this idea that we create um, a democracy where anybody can come up with suggestions, we test them on our website, and we let our customers tell us what works and doesn't. It's possible that Monty's idea is 10 times better than the hippos. Now in the past, in the offline channels, you don't have a choice because um, you can't test that much. TV, radio, magazines, it's harder on the offline channels for you to do experiments. It's expensive. Not impossible, just expensive. On the online channel, it's pretty easy for me to try your idea and my idea and let the customers tell us very quickly which one works. So um, I'm a big fan of moving beyond hippos to, to tell the hippos 
you have an idea, that's great. Let's try it and see if it is better than somebody else's idea. And this democracy is a thing, I think, that will create uh, uh, websites that are great because what you're doing is the company is coming up with many ideas and the customers are voting on it. Right? The customers are voting by buying more, downloading more, creating accounts. The customers are taking those actions. Then it is a win-win combination because the customers win and you win. Okay, great. So let's go out and try it. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much.